Wako tonzo wa shona yako. Shatonaka. It's not just shona. No. Whether you are coming from China, whether it is French, any language, ungo isabezi mwenzewe. You just plug in your earphones. So, he has uh, introduced a system that really works and we have individuals that are quite trained, they have degrees in, in, in that area of making sure that the translations are, are correct. So while I am ministering from here, there will be in their cubicles. They will be hearing you any language of your choice and they are there. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a well trained crew that, that he is working with. All that was because I said um, I don't feel comfortable. It wasn't an instruction that I had given, but he just felt that since I'm not comfortable, something needs to be done. Which, which to me, it means a lot. It means a lot. It means a lot. It means a lot. So let's make use of that. That we receive next time. But once you bring, they will tell you what to do. So let's use that and opportunity and platform. You are going to realize what I'm going to not I'm not going to preaching for long now. And all of you are going to ask me for forgiveness. Now you will know what in the end you get time. The interpreter was eating most of the time. Mm. I'm not a person who yeah. takes much of your time. All right. So, and also messages that uh, I've preached ever since, all of them are now being translated into different languages. So I think really the ministry is getting global. So I'm, 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 I'm so glad and I'm so excited about that development. Yes, now millions upon millions, even billions of people can get to hear what we are saying. So it is, it is amazing. It's amazing what the Lord is doing through his people. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you so much again. I know I had some few people that uh, accompanied us yesterday to Mutare. And we, we are keeping on having new people coming, attending because of what the Lord is doing in, in, that, in, that, uh, in that area. You know, yesterday we had how many people that came? 7,000 7,200 7, people also that came to witness and the subject yesterday was on seeing Jesus. Seeing Jesus. It was for those that had come not to see the prophet but to see Jesus and those that came to see the prophet were disappointed but those that came to see Jesus were satisfied they were fulfilled it's, it is given to us to disappoint <laughs> and 
Zubi. Anzi. She was saying thank you so much for uh, postponing the cyclone. <laughs> As is possible. Those of you that were there in Mtari, what blessed you the most? What blessed you the most? You've got a question concerning the, the cyclone or what? No, it's, ah, okay. it's, it's concerning the it's concerning the the reports which were there the past few weeks. They were terrifying. We saw even pictures in video forms of one. There were experts. We were talking of the impending cyclone. <laughs> I thought you said no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's okay. No, no problem. Father, you ah. went ahead. Ah, yeah. No, no, no. We never do. Don't worry about that. No, no. Let's hear about the yesterday service. <laughs> Give him a seat, please. Remember, you are standing right next to security. <laughs> so we are having a security threat here. <laughs> it's a technical. It's a technical. Father, I was in Mutare. Okay, look, look. Yesterday. Check your left side, please. Check, check your left side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if it's about Mutare, then go ahead. <laughs> I was in Mutare yesterday. The skies were blue. Ah. Father, All it's right. something let's, that let's we can't see. Let's hear about something over. else. What excited you the most? Yes. If there is something that you would want to learn more, even from yes, last Sunday service, where we were dealing with the receiving and what? Receiving the power. Uh -huh. Receiving, the art of receiving. And we said your giving will be determined by your capacity to receive. So whatever you have learned, either from Tari or what you learned from here last Sunday, then I'm, I'm here for a few minutes. Thank you so These much. days I just want to prove to you that I'm a good guy. Yes. yes. I like it every time when I'm going home and I know I haven't taken much of your time. I like it. I, I like it. Father, you... You explained about breaking protocols um, yesterday. Yesterday in Tari, mm. that Philip, the Greeks had come to introduce to see Jesus, mm. but they had to see Philip, and Philip had to see Andrew, and Andrew had to talk to Jesus for the Greeks to see Jesus. But you said because they had come to see Jesus, the person. Because the following verse was saying, the time has come that the Son, Son of, of Man be glorified. Yeah. And it was the man that they came to see. Sure. That's why they had protocol. Yeah. But if they wanted to see, he who was saying, um, um, the, the, the Son of Man has come to be glorified, which means it is his body that they came to see. But if you want to see Jesus, you don't get to through protocol. Yes. That was powerful, Baba. Yes. That may, was I, powerful. may I take that from yeah. yeah. John 12, verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, mm -hmm. and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come mm -hmm. that the Son of Man should be glorified. Mm -hmm. That was incredible, man of God. I mean, I read that scripture in all my years, but I never saw that. That there was a breaking of protocols when it comes to see Jesus himself, the spirit man. Thank you. So even myself, I read it several times. 
there are things hidden in that passage of scripture that are so profound, especially looking at the advantages of the glorification of the son of men into becoming the son of God by, having, by him having to go through the process called death which is a process that we try to avoid every time but yet to him Jesus it was a glorification having to die as the son of man so that he is glorified and after he is raised from the dead he is in a glorified state where now the Greeks can have access to him without having to go through Andrew or through Philip. And he is currently in that state now where whoever would want to see Jesus can see Jesus without having to come through the prophet. Ah. So, yes. So, the, the idea there was why would but Jesus say Jesus after he had been told that you have got people outside the Greeks that have come to see you? He answered that by saying the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then he started talking about his death. Is that time that you can talk of your death? We are saying there are people outside that have come to see you. And then he says, my hour now has come to be glorified for the seed to fall into the ground. What was, why, why would that be the answer? Is answering the need. Because this problem is going to continue as long as I continue manifesting as the son of man and not be glorified into becoming the son of God through death. Then those that would want to have access to me will continue struggling, having to go through different individuals to follow certain procedures and protocols so that they will just get to see the son of men. But if the son of man is to be glorified through death, then he's in a state where now all the people from any place can have access to the glorified son of God. So then he introduced the subject. You see, you realize that I preached for how many minutes? Hmm? It was very, even the doctor is confirming it was very, very short. <laughs> Doctors have an understanding of time. <laughs> very, very short. So I left the, uh, the last part, the process of the glorification where he began to talk about the seed, one, a grain that has to fall into the ground, and it abides alone. alone. Hmm? Yeah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. That was in reference to his body. Mm. The son of man needed to fall into the ground. Uh -huh. It abideth alone. Abideth what? Alone. It is alone until it is sown. So what is he saying? He is saying through death I will become multiple. Death will help me become omnipresent. It will be too many of one me. So the Greeks are struggling to have a meeting with me today because I'm just one corner. So, but for, for thousands of believers to have visions and experiences of me all at the same time. The one corn has to be 
sown into the ground and become many in terms of manifestations, yet one. That's glorification. That's glorification of the Son of Man. I know it's, it's still mysterious to some of the people. You are happy sometimes when I just talk about you, but you're not happy when I talk about him. And yet, it is him that makes you you. Do you know some of the people that were present in Jerusalem when Jesus was there, they never got to see him. <coughs> yes. They never got to see him. But after his death, and after his resurrection, he's no longer just one corn. He went into the grave so that he would not abide alone. He wanted to be too many of himself around himself so that all of the Greeks and even the Hebrews and even the Koreans that would want to have a meeting with him they can see him all at the same time because of that form of glorification. So death must not be feared. He gives it another term. He calls it glorification. So remember, when he said the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, what he did then was not to walk on water. What he did was not to be suspended in the air. No, what he did was to die. And he caused that the glorification. So he was focusing on what he would eventually become after his death. Here, I'm abiding alone. But then, it becomes multiple experiences that my people are going to have of the same me. So today, you can have access to Jesus even away from the prophet. And the reason why you come to the prophet, the only reason that you are coming here is so that I train you on how to have experiences with him. It's about you being trained on how to have a personal relationship with him. That requires me to talk to you about. That is my duty. That is my responsibility. There was a need for a great man of God who had fallen from his position of authority. His name was Eli. To be positioned somewhere close in the temple in case an upcoming prophet gets to hear the voice of God for the first time. Yet he was not sure where this voice was coming from. So what was Eli still doing in the temple? He wasn't there to, he was no longer there to hear the voice of God. He was there now to hear the voice of those that were hearing the voice of God. <laughs> so that you'd become the library where young prophets would come to and get to understand what they are hearing. So it was a man who was no longer hearing God who told the man that was hearing God that that was God who spoke to you, young man. 
Ah. Ah. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sir. I pray for you. I receive. Yes. God will have mercy on you. And see you. So that's my, that's my role. But we can still have a relationship, both of us. Yes. The shepherd, the sheep relationship. That one, that's another story. But I'm only saying you must have a personal relationship with God even away from me. You must be able to hear God in your own house. You must be able to access information and ideas from God directly in the absence of Philip and Andrew. Because we are dealing with a glorified son of man who is now the son of God. The son of man is limited. You need Philip, the son of man, to guide you to him. You need Andrew, the son of man, to guide you to the son of man, Jesus. Ah, but once the son of man dies, the one seed becomes many. And from any part of the world, you can pray and talk to him, and he can talk back to you. That's profound. Father, may I ask a question? Mm. You've just described to us something that we never thought existed. Where a man of God, can I call it a promotion? where he transcends to the point where he no longer hears the voice of God. At that point, where that man of God is no longer hearing the voice of God, how is he communing with God, number one, and what has he become? Because the way you're describing it doesn't sound like a demotion. It, it sounds like the highest level of promotion. What, what is that? What kind of a place is that? And, and what kind of a being has that man of God become? I think it's a, it's a place of promotion. You would have been promoted by God. Yes, I'm explaining that. I think that's a place of promotion. God would have what? Promoted. You understand promotion, right? You've promoted a lot of people. Yes. So, that, so you understand. He might have a problem with that. But, but you understand. I don't want to take much time on that because somebody's going, if I spend an hour on that, still someone, someone's going to think that I, I gave you a question. Uh, what else? What does you want to learn? What else you want to learn? What else you want to learn? The service is in progress as well. For, for those that were in Mutare, they would, they would remember Luke 8 verse 25. About what manner of man is this? And you said, you, we, I said you, we must remind you. I said you must remind me. Here we are. So that I will talk about that passage of scripture. Here we are. Yes. Are we in Mutare? <laughs> <laughs> but understand when it comes to briefly when it comes to God's voice when God is speaking he's speaking because he's aware of a listener the presence of somebody who has an ability to hear him or something so God will speak even in the absence of a person but in the presence of even objects nature he is aware 
of the ability that nature has to hear his voice. So he speaks. You would, you would find God speaking even where, where there is nobody. Because where there is nobody, there is still something with an ability to hear the voice of the Creator. So sometimes God speaks to nature and he allows his voice to be stored into mountains, stones, rivers, water, vegetation, so that whoever is going to come 2,000 years later after God would have spoken can pass through that place can get to the mountain that heard God's voice and there would still be an echo of what God would have said. So the idea behind hearing God's voice, that, that idea requires the construction of an institution. You need a school, you need an academy to raise people into becoming hearers or understanding us <laughs> of God's voice. <laughs> That's what we are here for, Father. Thank you for training us. But you know, when you take me to that area, we will not come back. We will not come back. But you must understand, it gets to a point where I've told you before that, you know, when depending on where you are positioned in God, <coughs> that is going to determine how you hear what he says. When you speak, your voice is coming out. It's only your ears that get to hear. So what comes out of your mouth can only be heard by this part. Okay. But if you think of raising your hand, it has to come from the brain. And your hand is told. And your hand hears. But the hearing of the hand is not audible. Yet the hand has to hear. <coughs> so we are all members of his body. So when he speaks, the way we hear him differs. The brain would have spoken to the hand for you to raise your hand. <coughs> but in that moment, your ear cannot hear what the hand is being told. So it's a hearing ability that is given to the hand. And the ear doesn't have that hearing ability. It's a communication between, between two entities until the mouth decides to speak what is in the mind then the ear can hear <coughs> so when it comes to hearing God's voice you have to take note of the part the organ that you are in that entire body of Christ you hear God differently <coughs> 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 you were talking about look, right? What manner, what manner of a man is this that even the winds and the sea? Obey him. Until today, we still have even historians that are trying to argue over the humanity of the Christ, even over the divinity, the divine nature 
of the Christ. And some still believe that Jesus was just a man of God. He was just a man of God that God had given a gift to him. The sick can do some wonders. So to them, he is a man that God had called into ministry. And yet the men that were present when Jesus was here as a man, they are questioning his humanity. What manner of a man is this? So getting to hear from those that were present when the man was around, their testimony, they kept on wondering because he would do extraordinary things. That's Jesus for you. I, I, oh, I feel his power. I feel his power. Oh. What manner? He was a different caliber. He was in his own league. His struggle was to, to make people believe that he's, he's a man. That was his struggle. Touch me, for the spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. Give me a fish to eat so that I can prove to you that I'm what? Amen. But what? And he said unto them, Where is your faith? Mm -hmm. Read it. What manner of? What manner of man is this? What manner of what? Man. Man is this. This. That. For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey. Would cyclone. Would 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 yeah. Jesus have Okay, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Would would Jesus had spoke because commanding the the winds and the sea would you have done that if you were God? Would you have spoken unless you were sure of an ability that the wind has and the water has to hear? To hear. To hear. To hear. I'm confirming what I've just told you some minutes ago that God sometimes he speaks even when you are not there because he's aware of something that is there that has an ability to what? To hear. So he goes ahead and he still speaks knowing that you are not listening to him. Hello? Okay. But there is a, there is a, a deeper level to that revelation. That one is, 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 is deep. It's deep. He's not just trying to help us understand the ability that the wind has to hear. There is a level of obedience. Because what, what is surprising them the people around Jesus was not the wind's ability to hear him but to obey. So it is given also to nature to obey or to disobey. So you are witnessing the submission of the wind 
to the authority of the Christ. Jesus. The authority Simba. of the Christ that brings into subjection even the winds. This is why I said, remind me later, because I knew a number of people would not get this. Now, maybe next week. But hear me. They were sitting there as Jesus stood up and he spoke into the air. And the way he spoke according to their understanding was a command. And they witnessed two things that occurred. Jesus being head by the wind and by the waters. They were there. And they, they, they were aware that we are not his audience today. Yeah. He is not saying what he is saying so that we can hear, but he is saying what he is saying so that he can be heard by what? The winds we and the water. water. So they witnessed, number one, the ability that was given by God to nature to hear. Number two, the level of submission, obedience of nature to the authority of God. So the next time you speak to the mountain, be aware of the ability given to the mountain to hear what you are saying and to either obey or disobey. This is why when it comes to the time when God is rewarding those that have been obedient. It is not only humans that are going to be rewarded. Even nature that obeyed when the servant of the Lord commanded the sun to stand still and it obeyed. During that day, even the son will be rewarded for that kind of obedience. Mountains that disobeyed you will have to be punished in that day. In another place, they were surprised by the obedience of unclean spirits that even demons obey him. It wasn't, it, that's beyond hearing. So you must get to that level where you understand <laughs> it's not about just hearing him. You have to be able to obey him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned. That's Mark 1, 27, right? Uh-huh. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, mm -hmm. what? thing is this what thing what what kind of a doctrine is what thing is this uh -huh. what new doctrine is this they called it what a doctrine doctrine uh -huh. what, for, was the, what was the doctrine for with what was the authority what was the doctrine watch that for with authority with what authority with authority uh -huh. commanded the he even the unclean spirits, uh -huh. and they do obey him. What a God we serve. Yeah. 
if <laughs> if that, that, that doesn't excite you, I don't know why you are here. Tell your neighbor, my sister, you are lost. You don't belong here. My brother, you don't. <laughs> what makes you think, Kuti, I'm not addressing your situation? Here? What makes you think? Is it not a wind that is bothering you? Is it not a storm that has been tossing your life back and forward? Yet those winds are ready to take what orders from a man who has authority and the authority is in form of a doctrine. For us to be head and for us to be obeyed by demons, it's a demonstration of a doctrine. It's a doctrinal issue. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> you have to be a doctrinal member. You must understand doctrine for you to operate in this kind of authority. Doctrine, teaching, uh -huh, okay. that which is taught. Do you know, I told you before that there is a level of obedience that you get to, a level of obedience, you get to that level of obedience, it is given to you by God to execute judgment on all disobedience. You have obeyed God for, for so long, for a long time, that two, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6 uh -huh. and having in a readiness having in a readiness you have to be ready to what? revenge to revenge <laughs> all disobedience all disobedience whether it was a mountain that you commanded and it disobeyed whether it was a demon I, I have to tell you this because some of you you are waiting for God after the last trumpet to come and punish demons that disobeyed. And yet you must be ready now to execute vengeance, revenge, and judgment upon all disobedience. Hmm? Upon all disobedience when your obedience... When, when, that's the time. When your or what, your what? obedience when your obedience is fulfilled be seated so the power that you have to execute judgment over disobedience has to emanate from your obedience. Your level of obedience is what empowers you to judge disobedience. So you can start living a lifestyle of punishing evil spirits from your village. And you speak to what they are referring to as winds and yet according to you, you know these are spirits and spirit entities. You can command spirits As a child of God, you command spirits and they have to obey 
Should they disobey, they must have an understanding of the consequence. Because you have understood the readiness to execute vengeance. Immediately after you have commanded an evil spirit to let go of your daughter, to let go of your son, to let go of your business, and you have instructed, you remember instructing demons to have nothing to do with your money. And you still find them loitering around your dollars. You must move, take that matter to the next stage, which is the Supreme Court. And you say, today, my prayer is, I'm not going to be <laughs> just commanding demons to obey. Today, I have to punish. If demons only know you as someone who is coming to cast them out, they don't consider you a judge. <laughs> a judge makes criminals pay. It means there are certain instructions that we are supposed to give to evil spirits and evil spirits are supposed to obey. For demons to obey, 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 for for demons to obey, they have a history of disobedience from the past. And yet when Jesus comes, what he's doing is not only asking the demon to come out of the man. No, Jesus would tell a demon how to come out <laughs> nicely and not hurt the, the person. Mm -hmm. And he would give a demon an instruction not to come back at wherever that demon is going to go. It will be telling people, <laughs> I cannot go back there and cause the same harm because I'm, I'm a spirit under instruction to never come back again. So it will be forever under obedience to never afflict you again the second time. That's something that you forget to tell demons when you are casting them out. You let the demon go without a perpetual instruction. Something has to be told to the demon. That what you did, I've seen it. <laughs> Don't repeat it. Okay. A car can swerve three times. And you know a strange driver has taken off. The kind of prayer that you do immediately is as, as far as I remember when I bought this car, you were not there. If you are interested in driving vehicles, the showroom and the car sales are still open. Go and buy yours. This one, I bought it for myself. You cannot drive my vehicle as a spirit without my permission. But you, you also must have obeyed the message on the dashboard that says a service overdue. For you to understand that this is a demon, your obedience must have... <laughs> Uh, 
in case it is not a demon, it's your suspension. Letting you know of the kind of abuse that you have subjected it to. And you try to command evil spirits where they are not. You must check your level of obedience to instructions. Then that becomes your authority and power over evil spirits. Are you following this? Are you following this? Okay, be seated, please. Be seated. When you, are, when you are delivering what is yours from evil spirits, you must understand the process. You must understand the process. First of all, your sensitivity to the presence of spirits must be very, very high. There is a spiritual fine tuning that is required for one to be able to successfully decipher the presence of spirits. Be it the spirit of God or it is the an evil spirit. <laughs> Both are spirits. They require to be discerned when they arrive. So you, you have to understand that first stage. Where you are praying, asking the Holy Spirit to give you an ability to sense spirits. But that is just a diagnosis. That is, that is, not, that is not a treatment. Many people here can sense the presence of demons. They are good at the diagnosis. But what to do with their findings? You require another art. What to do with your findings? What to do with your findings? You can't be feeling demons every time. In your house. And you don't take that matter to the next stage. What is the treatment that has to be injected into the atmosphere? What kind of a chemical would you need to apply in order to repel the presence of demons? So you move on to the next stage. All these stages, when I talk to you about those stages, I've been there before. I, I've, 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 I've worked in, in, in different dimensions of manifestations. And if you check my presence there, if your sense of smell is good, you, you can tell that I've been there before. The, I'm talking of about all these stages. Some of you are not aware that when God said to Moses, take off your shoes. He then said, for the place where you are is holy. Holy. What had shoes to do with the place that was holy? There is a lot of stories, of course, but I don't want to talk about something that you have already heard or what I've already said. The deeper part of that mystery where God had to ask his servant to take off his shoes because the place is holy. It was the place that was holy. The place was so holy. Already I feel like I want, I'm almost going back to what I had already said, but something deeper than that. The place is holy. So take off your shoes. And then that's exactly what he did. So what God wants him to do is to create contact 
unity, unity, oneness with the place that is holy. Okay, okay. Let's not have any rubber in between insulating the holiness that is emanating from the ground. You are now in a place, you are in a ministry that has the capacity to holify you. Know the things that you need to put off in order for the ministry where you stand to influence you. Know what to put off. Remove your shoes. Delete your history where you are coming from. Because you no longer belong to Wazezu. You are no longer coming from Wanachikona Mombe. You are no longer Wanachikona Mombe. There is a taking off of a shoe. Your mode of transport, what has brought you to this place, was a malfunctioning vehicle. The generation that brought you here, your gene that brought you here, was a wrong vehicle that needs to be put off. Your shoes are wrong for the next journey ahead of you. Which has brought the whole family into these troubles. There are certain people without the same totem. Who are setting up satellites in space. They are men. Right now they are struggling trying to find out how do we demarcate, how do we come up with places out of space where we can go and we build houses. They've, they've exhausted earth. They are now looking up. They want to explore into other dimensions where they can go and exist again after having existed. Your, your shoes are wrong. These shoes cannot take you anywhere. Yes, thank God they have taken you from where you are, from where you were, but now that you are here, established on a ground that is what? Holy. It's time that you take off your history so that you stop suffering like your father suffered. Huh? Now, the last part of that revelation, which, of course, I'm not going to dwell much on, on it, God also wanted Moses Ooh, 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 ooh. Eh. 
God wanted Moses also to leave proof. A mark, a footstep in a dimension so that generations to come that are going to pass through this dimension would know who has been there before. Manyatera ya awasia, even Mapurisa, I don't need to say who identify the owner because Manyatera ya. We have difficulty. Aka wandir wanalan. There's a lot of people who have them. Remove your shoes. What God wanted Moses to put on the ground is a print. So that you are you become the registered pioneer of a dimension. Men of God All other men of God who follow after you find your footprints in that dimension. Because people have a problem of claiming that I'm the progenitor of this and Yet you saw someone else's footprints. So take already. off your shoes. Learn. It's an art. Some of us who have not been able to do that. My revelation now go here goes in it. These are revelations coming now. Taguz goes in it. Unz po waka fura na po bai pe waka feka shangu. Unga da waka visa. I'm being told now that where you pass, where waka siya matsimba aku. And left a footprint. Left. It's deliberate. Registering your presence in dimensions. We thought it was humility. So if God allows me, if God gives me more time, from this subject, I will talk to you concerning trademark and establishing your presence in the market. Men of God, I'm amazed at what you are saying. Footprints, we know they are like fingerprints. We don't copy each other. The patterns are completely different for 8 billion people on this planet. No one has similar footprints. They are completely different. What about the can be copied, but footprints are completely different. It's not all about doing business, but establishing Yourself, your presence, so that you are identified with a certain product. Kusika wa identify you a certain product. They cannot see that product and not remember you. That is registering presence in a dimension. Am I talking to someone here? Yes. We just want to do things. That is why sometimes my prayers doesn't work for you. You can take your seats. Sometimes I fail to help you. Because you are not the ones that I was sent to. And I deal with special cases. Special cases. You saw the referrals that the doctor was referring to. Some of the issues you are looking for 
Unungori na Arabi zauda mudi kuguda ina iche tu pati. It's only that you don't want to leave this church. Ameno, ameno chayaka kuita iyo ina iche. I don't know what this church did to you, for you not to want to leave it. Your pastor is already preaching whilst you are here, somewhere else. <laughs> My specialists that have been, that have become seasoned in their profession. Even for a procedure, some of them they will book you two years from now. They will book you with our right. Was after two years for for a procedure? Yes, surgery. Two years to come. Two years later for surgery. You think all this while he's on picnic? No. Ah, he's a rafa. Kusu kuda da aruku kuuza kuti do kwandavi. From here, I'm now. I've become futuristic. I'm, I've become prophetic in my profession. You cannot have my services immediately. Join, join the queue. And people have to wait for two years. But when you are here, you are here. 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 But when you are here, you are here. But how many doctors? And then guys are mad simba. You will have seven years okay. footprints. But area iyo yo irukuku netsa. So good is not to see that this guy is the best. This also. Funza ma lawyers edo ati na umuno ma. They can. When to ziba na pache zwa ba uti u ya lose the case. That this one never loses the case. They know each other in their field. Wano ziwana. Iwo katu na niya yangu da kuno tisha marindi represento. Ando tanga ndo zodi. Saka mwenge wa guana ni lawyer. You want to know that his opponent's lawyer. If you want, you want to do this. Ando to ziwa. Ando tanga ndo kuto ngogoro wa marisha. Ando ya sosi ziwa. Ando kuto ngodi gurara mawa. Pana chaka ipa. Zina mwarim kati. Pati achi ya sosi ziwa udi niya e. Knowing that this case before us. The guys that I'm fighting against in court, they know each other in their trade. We establish a footprint. It's establishing whoever putting a footprint in your trade. We are going to do it as we deliberate. We are going to make sure we are going to do it as we say. We mirror upon you are not deliberate in removing your shoes. Some people they actually go out there and scalp for difficult cases just so that they create a name. That's true. A case where you know you're not even being paid for, but you're investing in a name, in the As establishment of a name. All that we find time to talk about But we have been, God has been taking us to different places, whether physically or even in the spirit. And we have not been good as God's children to establish our presence. To establish our presence. To establish our presence. With what had happened, giving you an example, I took the Oranis Royal, the Kwamtari. The great work that had been built there and so massive, everything was good. Until, of course, something else happened. So, they had no place where they could meet. And then we ignored them for years. You cannot then go back now. And you have more than 7,000 people coming. Unless there is a footprint somewhere. Unless, unless, 
unless kunze kwe kunge It means I can be comfortable anyway. Even if I'm to choose to start pastoring that assembly for, and not come back here again, I will still be a satisfied man. Who would not want a 7,000 membership? Church. So t- you tell me, when, when am I going to struggle? When am I going to lose members? For what reason? Huh? They're not saying come and we are saying that I'm profit. I'm cool. I'm saying come and make a profit. Oh, profit! No, Emmanuel. 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 Wasting time. All the titles. Emmanuel. 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 <laughs> Title was read that before pastor, we evangelist, be prophet. Pastor All of that expired. West Rao and Tai. Tony Matsimba. Can we see the full pas- 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 so can open the bus. Do you have cracks or what? Do you have cracks or what? So they were amazed at the doctrine because he had power over evil spirits and demons would obey. So, Tichipeta Nyaya, Iyo, Iyo, Ona, Iyo, Mfura, Iyo, Udzu, Kwa, Shokuita, Na, Jeso, Mepo, Iyo, Udzu, Kwa, Shokuita, Na, Jeso, Aina, Kunzu, Kwa, Chete, Ya, Bayadi, Ya, Obey. Because the winds and the waters uh, aware of the what? The punishment. So they obey. I'm talking, I'm referring to the winds and the waters that are in disobedient. By, by winds and spirits, I'm not just referring to demons. You as a wind you as a spirit and the waters in your body they are ready to take orders and to obey you be seated please did you see how many people lost weight yesterday? I said, okay, I said to, I said to people, let me say it now. And then, I didn't say, you, you start praying people. Please, please, please pray for this to happen. No, it's an order. Yes. An evaporation of weight occurred. How do you control the body? that is coming from an awareness that we now have that waters are ready to obey. We are ready to what? To obey. Be seated, please. Be seated, be seated. 
Weeds and waters do what? Obey. So God commanded. What has that to do with me? Guys. Your body is water. It's a raging sea. Right now, if you check the level of your success, level of your prosperity, it is according to the quality of the waters that you are. cannot heal a human body if you have no say, if you have no power, if you have no authority to give orders to the waters to give orders to spirits. I'm happy to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I love him so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can stand. You can stand. You can stand. You can stand. I'm happy to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's a good man. Good man. He looked after us at some point. We were in Botswana. Right? Just in Botswana. We were in Botswana at some point. <laughs> we're staying in his house. And they looked after us. We were on our way to South Africa. There was a conference, a church conference in South Africa that we wanted to attend. But I don't know why we had to go through Botswana. Wait. Oh, he wanted us to pass through his house. Right then we passed through his house and we had to drive. We drove from here through Botswana into South Africa for a conference. And we came back through Botswana again, passed through his house. Yes. So. We enjoyed a lot, and the food was good. Yeah. And he also worked so well under evangelist Jewish. These are the people who would conduct my crusades as I na evangelist Jewish. Do a great committee, actually. He was part of that committee. He did a great job. He did, he did a great job. He did a great job. Do you want to go back to Botswana? I remember those days. But my days are tired. Remember that I went to Botswana on a tenga chingo. Go to Botswana to buy bread. I remember those remember, days. There was a tie. Yeah, my groceries I don't know tenga Botswana. Groceries would be mm. bought in Botswana. Ah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they end up with Pastor Tembo and my Tembo. I would go sometimes with Pastor Tembo and my Botswana to Botswana to buy groceries. On tenga my groceries. Do you buy groceries there? Because we also go na, we also go na chingo chiri pa shelf, pa sina kana muno. When you get there, you find bread on a shelf, and there's no one stampeding to get bread. In my heart would pound that. Are people not seeing this bread here? It's in short supply back home. 
from one dimension to another dimension. You remember that other company, Yangaine, there was an article on some paper of a competition of some sort. Then I told him that you don't do in here and what is it you know in Botswana. I was at his house. No matter fill up a form says Maneta Nichine Gine Gine In one week on our friends, we have told him a prize. Because I can talk about my prize, he knows it. They want the prize. I was teaching him. Amen. How to manipulate things. <laughs> a child of God, what you want, you get. But I'm a, I'm a foreigner. I'm passing by. But I'm going to, let me show you what to do so that you win this. Then coming back from South Africa, we had to pass through that very big firm and collect, my, true. My, and, and, col and collect my prize. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, let's, but you see, what is, what is key here is understanding the authority that you have in any area, in any territory. Even the winds, even the waters, Obey you. Are you following this shadow? So, I want you to make up your mind. I want you to make up your mind. I want you to make up your mind and you decide that I need to put an end to this lifestyle, to this attire. I don't want to keep having these same experiences either financially or maritally. It is up to you to obey an instruction from the Lord to remove your shoes. You can sit down. Let me close. It. The last thing that I can maybe talk to you about concerning the removal of the shoes is creating your presence in the present, which is an art. Something that some of you here are not able to do. Establishing your presence in the present. You, you, you are worried about tomorrow. And you lose out on the happiness that God has bestowed upon today. How? to be present. Because you have not been taught, taught how to be present. In your present. Can I leave that one there? It's a curse that most people are having today. They are living life in anticipation. They fear what is coming. And they have no time to enjoy what has already arrived. That's why people that are afraid of death are fearing death whilst they are alive. It's during life that they fear death. Not being able to live in the present Many of you looking at me here, you are not here. You are not here. You are sick of a future disease. 
urugu rwara chirwere chada kuya munera mangwana you are being afflicted by a demon that is yet to possess you urugu rwatsika ne demon richigere kukugara it's a problem to come that has become your current problem. And yet Jesus had said, you must allow tomorrow to worry. I know I'm setting free somebody there. Like a day must must have its own worries. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought shall for the things of itself. As, as if tomorrow thinks. And you are thinking on, beh on behalf of tomorrow. And then when tomorrow gets here, tomorrow will not have to think for itself because you've been thinking on behalf of tomorrow. Days, it has been given to days to worry about what is going to occur during that day. Jesus is not talking about planning. Don't plan, don't worry. There's a difference between worrying and planning. Even the spellings are different. You can plan and not worry. That's Last Sunday, you are failing to live in the present. This is why sometimes when something good happens, you almost can tell it's not going to last. So you lose excitement, you lose joy even before it expires because you know it's going to expire. So you are failing to live in the moment. It shall last my marriage. It shall last a ride. Because you are wondering if this marriage is what, going to divorce during which are already anticipating failing to live in the moment. What if my husband is divorced? Those who are in the Ramba for now in the Chiripo. You see the strategy of the devil. Not allowing you to connect to the present holy place. There is a distance, there is a rubber between you and your current position. You are not in your present. Please be seated. Do you know some of you people, it will be even faster for me to heal you from a disease if only I can bring you into your present. Because today you are not sick, you are sick tomorrow. There are people that you heal simply simply by bringing them into their present. Take off your shoes. Be present. Next time you start receiving worries that you know to be coming from the future, you must remind yourself that I have to be established in the present. I'm here today. I'm here. There are people who are in prison who never thought they would ever see their family, their families again. Yet an amnesty came and the president came and he declared all people free with certain cases. And they are, they are out now. They could have committed suicide. Worrying about the future, worrying about tomorrow. And that worry makes you blind to certain miracles that can happen in between. That worry makes you blind to other things.
post amnesty prophecy 1 january 2015 <laughs> and 22 august 2015 for the second time explaining it okay in detail. okay <sighs> Does he sleep? I, I pray for you. <laughs> oh my God. May be seated, please. Present. Nasi. That's what we would say. So and so, why do we They would call out your name and you would say present, meaning I'm here today. Learn to be present. Learn. Check, you realize that most of the mistakes that you made, it was because you were absent minded. Check it. Check it. When you were involved in that accident, you were on the phone while you were what? driving. You were not present. It has been absence that has created most of your mistakes. There is an art of being present so that you learn to enjoy the moment. I've, I've, I've learned that. I've seen it several times. Have you realized that when I've seen that when, when I'm around? my team which is my children there can be a moment of excitement and it is during that moment of excitement that you feel an urge to want to look at the phone it's something that you keep sometimes you just pick it and then you drop it because you, you, you remember i have to be present i have to be present i have to be present it's a struggle it's not easy it's not easy So sometimes at some point my second born had to ask me daddy we are sitting here all of us we are watching this but you are putting on earphones I'm just there to deceive them and make them believe daddy is around and we are watching a movie together and yet she descend the absence of her father. You are not here. You are not here. If I'm listening to a sermon, it means daddy has gone to church again. So I will be shocked in, in the future if they start telling people that we never had time with daddy. In when you are not what? Your children know when you are not present. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disease that we have to really seek medication for and make sure that we get cured from it. Learn to explore and take advantage of the moment. Most of the gifts that God has given to you, they are packaged in a rapper called moment. Moment. The joy, your joy is in a moment. If you don't know how to treat a moment, you will not be able to realize the joy that God has packaged in moments. Moment. You have a question. Ita. Ita. Learn to live in the now. Stop worrying about what will become of me. What if this happens? What if that happens? What 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 what? And you know yourself to be someone who doesn't have the ability to 
to answer a lot of questions. Why, why do you keep asking yourself? <laughs> it has become like an addiction. Hey, but don't you know addicted we are we you think it's, addiction is it's an addiction to worry. Sometimes you look for an opportunity away from people just so that you enjoy what worrying. It's an addiction. It has said so sometimes. It says to know to get out of how to wear to those remind about that. Ew, ew, and the old Zagafoyra meets it's no fungi, or no fungi. And it's no far and ever more. Dismiss those thoughts. Chicha will not do fungi and nasi, me, Misha. What is it that you can worry about today? ZJC, Maraita Z. What happened to ZJC? You failed ZJC. So I just need to stop bothering yourself. <laughs> Some who are good at school, better than you, they are struggling. Those are you have. And then what of you? Who needs a name? Kunakir, one of you, worry. Enjoying worrying. Worry, no one had a so happy. Achibanda is a good machine. You are whooping down the road and also go cross. Seeing someone deep in thought, they jaywalk. Kuna Mudun to Nashi to the moon, we asked to born. Uno Missa Mot, Anos, we do man dee. They will come and yeah, no, so Because they are worrying. What are you thinking about? <laughs> what is it really that you are worrying about? <laughs> you want to say something? Good day, good day. Thank you, Pesasu. About to wrap up. Um, this past <laughs> week, uh, so this past week, and uh, just but I had a dream along the message of Murugu Tower. Someone like I got a flash a placard, and it was Matthew. Yeah, actually, I ended writing I said, do not be anxious about anything. So it was quite long, but more than the bad Sarah Baba to recall the dream that I got. At least you are leaving this service for the second time, which is good. Which is good. Mm. This body can be deceived. Your thoughts can deceive your body. Your thoughts. When you think of something wrong that is going to happen, according to the body, it's not anything that is going to happen. It's something that has already what happened. And your body is already programmed against something negative that, it, that, it, that has never happened. And we've given you these examples before. Kuti, a mere dream but you are not running. You wake up and But it was a dream. A dream was a thought. So thoughts can deceive your body into thinking. Could you at all in danger? Yet there is no danger. You are in a blanket. You are in a blanket. But you are in a game park. But you are in a game park at the same time. Thoughts can deceive your body into getting ready to respond to certain dangers where there is no danger. But that glucose ring rather release. Could your body be ready to run from danger? Now imagine there is no danger. What are you going to do with all those chemicals? This was yeah. okay. EAMG kit ya toys kwa kudara. It's an AMG kit that has been put in place already. You are geared, wired to go, yet there is no journey. 
What do you do? What do you know? What are you going to do? The process you could body yako itange ku restore ka back. Was also kawakuza body yako kutaya wa iwo pechet. But what are you going to do with my chemicals SAI? What are you going to do? All the chemicals that have been released, you are now sick. Muruku followers. Your following? your mind can deceive your body. If your brain tell, keeps telling your body that you are in danger, then your body is now programmed to react against the danger that is non-existent. What are you afraid of? What are you worried about? Why are you so much concerned about my elections? You are not even a candidate. Please. Please. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you here. This is, the, this is the only way that we can heal your body. Something you want to understand about worry and the authority over waters, authority over winds, and something. How many minutes do I have left? Mama, oh. Dog for it, am I ended? She's, she's my timekeeper. That's why I keep time. You want to go to the office? My hours, you are my time. So you can't tell me anything about time because you also take a long time, women. What is it? She. Yours is an observation. Okay, but we. Even when I'm can, I'm going to tell. Hanze, Hanze. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you so much, Father, for this opportunity. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, my question on, is on worry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to speak on behalf of uh, some of my friends mm -hmm. that were with us in Ukraine, mm -hmm. um, that we went through a lot, that we can't just wake up and say we have forgotten about it. Sure. It has taken so much from us because some of us we spent like six years there, but only to come out with a SHO and everything was left behind. Mm. So for me to say I'm going to sort of like start my life afresh, it's a little bit difficult to such an extent that I actually hold my diary and as you are saying pray and stuff will come to you and then you have to write it. I actually find myself just putting the diary away and just crying and asking myself like, what sin have I actually committed for me to be in a position that I am in right now? Because it's not making sense. You actually have opportunities where you're supposed to go for meetings, you're supposed to meet people, deals, uh, projects and stuff, but sometimes you just don't find the strength because that trauma just keeps drawing you back. You are not really making any progress in your life because that trauma is inside of you. You can't just wake up and it's gone. Okay. Thank you. Unfortunate, unfortunately, we, we know, we are aware of that, yes, that situation that is prevailing in that part of the world. But I, I would want to give you another chance, an opportunity to rephrase so that you can get to a point where you can ask me the question. I know what you have gone through and the experience has been so terrible, horrible. But I, I, want to, I want you to ask me a question in a certain way that will help you remember your question. What would be your question from that 
experience. What, which part would you want me to answer? Because there's a lot. I can talk to you for the next one, one hour concerning what is happening in Ukraine and Russia. But I want to help you. Okay? I'm keeping on talking like this so that I give you more time to think about the question. So, once you're ready, you can ask me the question, where exactly do you think you need help? Where can I help you with regards to that experience that, that, that you've, you've had? You can go ahead and ask. Whoever is going to ask me a question next time, I know you are people that are so grateful. You always appreciate me and thank me for the opportunity and so on. But I would want you to go straight to the question. All right. Because I've already spent most of your time and you want to go home. And I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. Some people are not here. They are at home. They are not present. They don't know how to be present. <laughs> if you don't know how to be present, the future, the future will affect you. You will behave and you will act according to the future. Where you are going. Some of you here, you have seen this. It's a very bad illustration, but you have ex all experienced it. It gets so terrible in order for you to control the waters or your waste when you are getting closer to the restroom. Am I a good teacher? All the way from town, you are feeling I cannot, I cannot. Let me, let me get home to the toilet. And when you are two meters away, what's happening? Your body is already living where? In the future. You are programmed already to react according to the yet you are still in the had you remained in your present you would not have been afflicted by the future problems. So try to be here, please. Try to be here. So what would be your question? You look so good by the way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very presentable. Thank you so much. All right. Um, the question that I have right now is um, giving a little backstory is when I was in Ukraine, I was actually helping my family financially. I was studying, yes, and I was financially stable in a way that I had to assist my family and siblings. But from the moment I came back, we as a family were actually struggling to probably even find food on the table every day. Sure. So my question now is, is I pray for financial stability. Will I ever get to that position where I can say I am now content with what I have? How can I live in the moment because I am failing to do that? So the question is, will I, will I ever get to how can I live in the moment? Because the trauma is dragging me back. I cannot do anything. Okay. Say it for the last time. Okay. Trying to rephrase what I said. Because living in the moment, that's what I've been say how to live in the moment that's what i've been saying okay so I was, say it again i was saying that when i was in ukraine i was mm -hmm. able to hustle for my own self mm -hmm. without having to be sustainable without having to ask for help from any other people from other people i had actually had to help my friends my family back home but from the moment i came back here i've been struggling I've, Yes, I do have ideas in my head, like thousands of them. Every day I can write an idea, I can write an idea, but I just cannot execute because I am not in the moment. The trauma is dragging me back. I cannot do anything. You keep going back to the trauma. 
Yes, I find myself experience. crying sometimes because it's so like, you're not you're failing to live in the present. Neither are you able to live in the future, but you're living in the past. Yes. It's your past that keeps following you. Yes. Okay. I think a number of people have, have, have had those moments when you realize that your shoes keeps following you. It's, it's, it happens. I've, I've noticed that people, sometimes they can pick questions from answers that would have given. Sometimes people pick questions from answers that I would have already given before they ask. When your past keeps following you, it starts affecting your present. And you have to learn to remove your shoes so that you can find yourself established in your present. Now, Sometimes, what we call trauma, sometimes what we call negative experiences, sometimes it is our misinterpretation of situations or happenings. Things will be bad in your life according to your definition of things. Because if you would want to look at the situation from a different perspective, you would cease to only see the trauma that you experienced and you start seeing the survival. Because under Normal war conflicts, there shouldn't be an opportunity for you to even carry your bag. You're talking of a satchel, and yet you carried your life again back to your country, not just a satchel. That shouldn't have been allowed. Hmm? Civilians die more in, during war than even soldiers. These are things that you should start bringing in to start dilute the trauma. You, you have to be able to begin to see the inter because at some point you guys, wherever you were gathered, as foreigners, you were so sure that we will not be able to depart. That, that was, that was a, you, can, you can imagine. All of us were watching what was happening on YouTube and on, on news and so on. Imagine the person who was there. For a plane to be able to take off and you are one of the passengers. Now, I'm not saying you are not appreciating all those things. I'm just saying those things should, you should be able to keep on finding more of such things and you introduce them into the trauma and they dilute the trauma. It becomes a blessing. It was supposed then to be your mother asking the question, my son could not come back. And what, have I, what sin have I committed? Why would God not create an opportunity for my son to escape? But now when the son is blessed enough to escape, what is given to him is an opportunity to ask a question. What sin have I what? Committed.
In life, what is going to make you stronger? Bigger and better, my brother. Is the traumas that you would have survived. Wars are not always meant to destroy, wars are meant to build. As you see buildings coming down in your presence, you are going up as a building. In terms of your strength and your confidence in God. No, you are, you are not following this part. Have you realized that in trying to create peace, people make war? In trying to create peace, people make what? War. People make war in order for peace to come. <laughs> But when peace has finally come, and you are not delivered from that conflict mentality, that becomes a problem even nationally. You'd have a, young, a young generation that is coming up, they have never been to war, never always being reminded. Do you know the struggle that we went through? Those people are put in place to prolong the conflict. To make sure that conflicts, they outlive their tenure. So when, when there is no longer any conflict, if there is still conflict verbally. There are people who are trained in bringing war to your doorstep, even when it's time for peace. So that, so that you stop living in the now. They can explain war to you until you can start smelling some tear gases and you start hearing even in your dreams there are people who are good at bringing the, the, the past into your present so that you are even terrorized more by the war that you never experienced how do you survive that? Because this is a fact, whether we like this or not. Looking at your clock, looking at the calendar on the wall, there will come a time when we will not have one person who fought the liberation struggle. Looking at time, looking at the calendar, there's coming a time when all of us, it will only be people who never saw War. And the only war that we will have is the war that would have been told, handed over to us. That's the only conflict that we're going to have. But what you need to understand is even some of the people are not going to talk about war. They never fought the liberation struggle. They lie. This was. This was. That's it. This was. No more story in Nagoto or what? On Bash. There are some who didn't even. But I would send them around on to Iowa. But if he explains it, you will say, indeed, these are the old veterans. Variko, Utiaga Tanga, Capera, Varumapako. There are some. During the entire struggle, they were hidden somewhere in caves. But because he survived, he tells you, I may survive of that because we, we fought for you. We fought for you. We fought for you. We fought for you. 
And you know the truth. If a person really fought for you, he brings back the spoils and he hands over to the people that never fought. You hand over what you fought for to the people that you fought for. Then you, you can say you fought for them. But if you are still in possession of what you fought for, you fought for yourself. Coming from war, there is a moment of sharing of the spoils. I preached about that in Mutare last week again, but let's, 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 not, let's not go there. But what I want you to understand, sir, is at your age, you have been privileged to experience warfare and conflict with little beards, no gray hair. We can sit down and listen to you as you narrate a conflict that we have never experienced. You don't need to be old to have gone through what you have gone through. Yet right now you carry sto heavy story. It's a heavy story that you carry that elderly people do not have. What you have survived. Now, if there is no better future for you, why would God why would God why would God who is an intelligent God keep you from the evil and deliver you from the snare of the fowler we must be able then to derive the future plan that God has from a mere strategy that God employed in helping you survive. Because, you know, who was, who was really guiding those missiles? Who took you to a place where you, you guys gathered? Who is telling the enemy not to launch a missile over that area? Because when there is when there is war, it's a misunderstanding. How come there was a measure of understanding involved? Why would they attack certain buildings where there were no people? There is some kind of an arrangement that God allowed in that conflict so that people like you would survive. So, so one man would thank God for allowing him to go through fire and not be burnt. But another man would ask God, why would you allow me to even pass through what? Father, you are prophesying. He is actually saying that so many missiles evaded him. And so many bullets evaded him in the process. You're actually prophesying what was happening to him. I'm not prophesying. We know what was happening there. I'm just trying to shed light on the positive. So that the positive will become too many. Until, <laughs> until we have finally diluted the negatives. By what? By the positive. I, I'm saying now, investigating the intelligence of God, would he save you from that so that you suffer? You are limiting probably God's capacity 
to help you even outside of your academics. You have another warfare, another conflict that you have to survive. Surviving your academia. You have to survive your CV. You have to survive your degree. Because if God realizes that that certificate is about to become your provider, he creates warfare against it. He is, he's crying now. He's crying. He's crying. We pray for him. We pray for him. Some of us, that's why we are proud. Failures. We talk to you about our lack of qualification so that you compare my lifestyle to the academics that I didn't achieve so that only God can stand out. Only God can stand up. I'm one person that even, it, even if I had passed, I would still have told you. I would have still told you. I know how to navigate the pathways of life. I know. But there are people who are not smart, that are foolish enough, that even if you tell them that I'm not educated, even if you, even if you provide proof that you are educated, they will still hang on to your confession that you have what? You have failed. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to help you understand <laughs> that if you were really going out and making sure that you put all that you have into wanting to become better <laughs> mentally. And God sees you heading towards that direction where you will eventually say it is because of my own power that I had gotten all this wealth. God will have to write you a letter and he says, it is I, the Lord, that gives you power. Lest you say it was by my own strength, my own education that I've acquired all of these things. You, some of you could have gone past a certain threshold into believing that without that education you cannot succeed. Ah, and and when, when, when that happens now, see, God is in the business of challenging anything that seeks to challenge his ability to provide. So God, God, God sits sometimes in the heavens depending with your understanding of where the heavens are situated. God, sometimes he sits and he looks at you and he sees you. Every morning, you go to, to, to Isaac's bedroom. Isaac, how are you, my son? My son, my son, Isaac. My son, my son, my son, my son, my son Isaac, my son. And God sees you. You are enjoying a, a gift from God. And sometimes he starts comparing himself and your commitment to him versus your commitment to what? To Isaac, your education. And now here comes a test of a lifetime. Yes. Can you hand over your certificate, your Isaac, to me and go back home empty-handed? Abraham, do you have faith that you will come back from Mount Moriah? Will you come back from Mount Ukraine without an Isaac and still believe that I can provide for you another Isaac. Don't let anything that you have acquired in life to take God's place. Because God will shake it. He would take it away and then your faith in his ability to provide will start to rise. 
If you look at the way that you have been praying in as much as you are saying, I've been crying and crying. That's not the way that you used to pray when everything was okay. But when Isaac has been asked for, you start worrying about your future generation. So, God, what am I going to become without an Isaac? I, I don't even remember without a certificate. And guess what? The people that are going to be asking for those certificates are people without those certificates. So all that we want now, in as much as education is good, I've told you before, we seek to become certified slaves. The person in need of that degree, the person in need of that certificate, my brother, is not you. It is the owner of the company that you seek to work for. It's not you. It's not, I'm telling you the truth. It's not you. They, they will ask for that in order for them to give you a job. A job that will never give you sufficient money. A salary, a salary, every salary, every salary, it's a curse in monetary value. It's a curse. Salaries are designed to never be enough. It should never be enough. This is, this is where now savings come in. Investments come in. So that you transcend a salary. At the end of the day, you will have to own a fame. You will have to own a company. Now, and the people that you are going to employ should be the ones worried now about their lack of education. You, God has given you another form of education. Now, I told a certain uh, pastor uh, who was worried about uh, how his kids were performing in school. And, and he was so worried and I said, it's failure according to your definition. The father also has a misunderstanding. <laughs> your, your children could be as ignorant as their father. Then I gave him a scripture where the Bible says, and God himself shall teach your children. It was given prophetically. And the Lord will teach your children. I said, are you ready to have your child enrolled in that school? Where God is the lecturer. He teaches you not mathematics, but life. Life. He teaches you life. He teaches you life. Imagine if you are going to become a president of a nation, they are not going to ask for that certificate. Imagine. One of the biggest jobs available, being a president of a nation, you don't need to have a degree. And all those with degrees, they come under you. When they graduate, you come to bless, you lay your ignorant hands on them. I'm trying to show you the value of the God that you have versus the education that you have lost. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forever. No, I will, you, you, you'll find it. Don't worry. 
Your, your children shall be taught of the Lord. Isaiah. Isaiah. Okay. So, listen. And listen. all the children shall be taught of the Lord. Ah. And great shall be the peace of thy children. Great shall what? Be the peace of who? Of thy children. It's not just peace. Their ah. peace shall be great. When your children now they have come back from no, no. Ukraine and they now sit under the teachings of the Lord. What you begin to understand now that you are back, you will realize now that you are back from Ukraine. Studies have continued, but what you are reading now is self and not books. It's you that you are reading now. It's, it's you that you will understand now. But for you to begin to read yourself, a book had to be taken however. It's you that you are dealing with now. And don't think this is going to continue. And you are thinking, so is God ever going to restore me? Restore you to what? That was nothing. That was nothing. You don't even want to go back to what you were doing before because still that was not enough. You no longer qualify for that past. Why? Because now you are an overcomer. There is an event in between that has made you better than the past. Why should you be taken back again? All that you were getting, all the money that you were making before, you had not seen that level of conflict. Yet that's what you deserved. But now you've come back victorious, having been saved from the fire by the Lord. Imagine what is laid ahead of you now. It has to be better than what? Where you are coming from. Are, are, are you people following this? Anyone here who is a survivor of a loss, anyone here who is a survivor of a loss, you are in a better state now than before. I, th I think I think say say he's understanding me very you in, in glasses. He's really he's hearing what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't no, Don't worry. Don't go there. I have a way of knowing and seeing if a man is seeing. This place is a gathering of survivors. We have all had conflicts. That is why sometimes somebody that is sitting next to you doesn't understand it when you are shouting and you are praising God. They don't understand. They don't understand. They don't understand. You are, you are, you are the only person, you are the only person that has access to your story. So when you start praising God, people are never going to understand you. If it were not for Jesus, Personally, if you were to ask me, even as a prophet looking at you, I, would, uh, uh, I have more confidence in you now than before. You are a better version that even God can work with. Now. Why? You are coming from the fire, you are more purified. Your understanding of life is better. The people that 
disrupted your education. What they are seeking to do, they, they, are, they, are, they might not be as educated as you are. The other one is a president, of course, but this one, before he became a president, he was a comedian. That's the certificate he had. He's the leader now of the nation. Isn't there something that you people are not learning? Even the war that disrupted your education, it's other people making money. All that is because of money. They're not worried about your education, what you have lost. No. Now economies are being controlled from that conflict that is happening. Two things are responsible for the economies, the control of the economies of the world. Diseases, pandemics and, and conflicts, war. Two things. Pandemics and war. You control the economy. The economies of the world. So while you are losing your little economy, someone is gaining his big economy. Do you know how much those missiles cost? Millions. It's not a plane that is transporting people. It's a missile. Wherever it's heading, it's not going to save lives. It's going to kill. Yet people are spending millions. People are making money in destroying lives. You want to make money in building lives. And your life gets disrupted. How do you survive that? You have to relook into your educational systems. From what I've learned, what I've seen, with the little education, the little things that I've known so far, I've discovered that the way the education system of the world has been designed, it has been designed in a way that is going to help you misunderstand yourself and understand something else. People go to school just so that they are blinded. You go there to be trained on how to not see your real self. You go to school to borrow a perspective. And things become wrong according to the information that you got from school. Wrong, you're wrong and your right is according to the teacher. That you. It's time that you start to study yourself. How do you function? At the hardships. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Look at how many people are busy studying what you are studying. There's a lot of competition there. Do you know there are people that have, have done what they call on-the-job training? We have had quite a number of people in that category in Zimbabwe. Most of them have since left the country. They are multitasked 
You get to a company, you know them, they have an ability to do all sorts of things, but they have no certificates. But someone certificate. with a certificate gets employed and he comes and he, he, he sits over them. But those people, the most educated that are sitting in the office, they don't even know how things are being run. Underneath. So the most educated becomes the most ignorant in terms of the practical nature of the organization. But listen, the person that you are calling uneducated, he has done on the job training. What he doesn't have is a certificate, yet what he has is a know-how. And that know, knowing becomes the true education that the, that the world systems are stopping you from getting. The, the guy can if it's an interview, you, you do not even give him a job. You will fail every interview. But give him the machine to operate. Give him the machine to, to fix. Amen. You see? So what is education according to you? You have to revisit your definition of education. Time is coming when you begin. You must have masters. You must have a degree in self-actualization. Understand yourself. Father, you are prophesying. He is confirming that he was doing IT without a certificate. And he was fixing a machine like you said, man of God, right now. But hear this. Hear this. But this is without a certificate. What is education? Okay, Pandiri Banaba, she did not throw away. You help me. Urad nite certificate rei inin. She did not throw away. What certificate do I need to acquire? Urad nite degree rei. Degree for. She did not throw away. Help me now. She did not throw away because you know what you do. You get the problem. You get it. Urad nite rei. Rei. What degree would you want me to do? Even the diploma that I got from, from Bible College, the reason why I had to go for the diploma, I knew for me to get a job, to be employed by an organization, which is not this one, I needed a diploma. Because that was my mentality. Unless I'm given an assembly, I cannot have an assembly. So for them to give me a place, I to produce a diploma because that was their ministry. But here, I, I don't remember. I don't remember any of you ever asking me for a diploma for me to have a job here. I may inquire it from you if you come looking for a job here. So I'm showing you this ministry so that you can see the size of the organization, the company that you are going to start, where you will not have a need for a certificate. I see. Kudzidza, itongo zidza shogungoti. Let it be basic literacy to know if you are not being Because these people, they have a way of working for you if they know that you know and if they know that you don't know. Just because of that reason, get educated. But not so that you become a, a billionaire. You will never become a billionaire because of a certificate from university. No. Akuna? Akuna salary which will ever get you to a million dollars. Even if you get $10,000, Mwezi Weka Weka. No chamber, I was in a million. So, Baba, I'm a millionaire. I'm a jambe. So, you say, Mira, Mira, Mira. Stop as long as your mentality is based on having a salary, having to work for someone, I'm not saying don't work for someone, I'm saying don't work for someone forever. 
Mira, Mon Chandra Munuz, a Chose. Keep on growing in grace until you get to a point where your certificate expires and you become bigger than your qualification. And you lecture my lecturers. The teacher, my professor. I teach professors. I lecture to lecturers. <laughs> they cannot hold an argument with me. What the topic? Let them look for whatever topic. No other three minutes. I only want three minutes. Three days. No other three minutes. I only ah, well. Three minutes to deal with them. Good. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm healing you now, so that you start realizing that it's not necessarily a loss. No, it's a gain. Bigger things are coming your way. So remove the shoes. Remove your history. Remove your past. It's time that you allow your feet to touch the ground and start walking forward now. Start walking forward now. Start walking forward now. Ah, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's put our hands together for him. One more time, put your hands together for the King of Kings. Who is still worried about the future? Yeah. What is left now is thinking. What is left now is planning for the future. No worry there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sometimes you don't want to that's certain about our flight yet you are trying to remember could, could there be a sin that I committed just in case and you are confessing even things that you never did so that you are pure in case anything happens someone is ordering beer they have no faith than you this one. Is that so? This way, eh? Is that so? Why are you paying attention to my challenges are we in between? You know, all right. Challenges that are you know, you hear someone. Anesi so rake raru shandi sa kuona. He ignores everything that he is seeing. But God, you know why? It's anzi gorere. Repeat it. Cheap. Anzi gorere. Anzi cheap. Twenty thirty. Anzi twenty thirty. Anzi twenty thirty. Twenty thirty. There is no verse that has been quoted there. My obstacles are there. All these obstacles. He is not even considering that. So what are you worrying about the future? Why are you worrying about the future? What is it that you fear in the future? That must become your confession. Even if there is a disease, even if there is cancer in your body, you tell the disease 2030 will be in 2030. I'll be here, I'll still be here. Nothing should intimidate you. Be certain about your future. Be sure that I'm going to be around. I'll be there to bless my children's children. I'll be blessing my grandchildren. You will. You. You will see it happening. You will be helping your children's children to do homework. You will. You yourself. Your brain, your mind will be in perfect condition. 
Aiona. Abraham's eyes could still see. Despite the age, mas isso Aiona. His eyes could still see. Ainda agora mo de fungar o vajinjo enyo. Wangu yambo kasiki stays. Just over sixty. Wangu to fungar o tinda agu to fa. Passe sina ba. Life yato bera. My life is done now. Kuna amu ane sixty stays wane confidence. Wamu atwana ba wane twenty years jais. There are some here with twenty. Arungo rota rufu every day. They are dreaming of their death. What kind of a life is that? Mando e o penyo agadaro. Jesus, you're going to be fungal to walk off because of Makore. Shaka expire kudaraji. So you're going to fungal Makore. Shaka expire. Then you're going to run around with Jesus. It's for mad people. Do you remember Makore? We are not killed by age. No, when time comes. Kananguva yakuana. Jesus said, "I all I lay my life down." Jesus, I know. Do you know what is our penny wang? Autore we life in a macore. Autore we life in a chirwere. A disease or age cannot take your life. No. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. That's the power you have. That is the power you have. I can tell you this right now as a prophet. There is nothing right now in your body that is powerful enough to take away your life. Nothing. I can look prophetically into your future and assess and analyze every trap that the devil has set against you. I can see you surviving all of them. You are not going to die because of what the devil is. No. No. Be positive. Tell your neighbor, and I go on to 10. Go to 10 people. Who else? Be positive. Be positive. Positive. Be positive. Confess your future now. Don't worry about your future. Confess your future. About your future. That's it. In I know, you know Ziva, having heard what I've seen in the spirit. Of course, sometimes I hear some prophets here and there trying to introduce chaos into our nation. When I look at that, there was a time when I would see that. There was a time God said, you people have the power. At this, we are not going to walk into darkness. Zimbabwe can never be destroyed again. There is no way that we are ever going back to where we are coming from. We are becoming Better and better and better. What, what, what are we here for then? You are telling me that the devil has power. Of great nation. You are going to go down the cliff and we fall our hands. We can't allow that. Iwe. We can't allow that. Things are only becoming better in this nation. This is a prophecy are getting from God. Istongo chema kuti horai ndaenda miri kwa makungwa ndaenda Australia ndaenda Ukraine kuno tiza education do it endera unzeko inyika muare bara kuti zokera kunyika kwe nyu it's going to be provided here here God is saying go back to your country here society kramuno
Yika ino wakwa. Thank you. A country is built by its kinsmen. Please, if, if you want to give to God, I'd say if you want to, then you said if you want to give. <laughs> if you want to give to the Lord, please, this place is open. I want people, I want people to learn. Please, please, he the must be able to tell. There must be energy on your face. You are not going to be able to tell me. I will not be able to tell you. I will not be able to tell you. I will not be able to tell you. Stop worrying. Quiet. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Farai. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Don't worry and be happy. Why? Because we know the earth has been given to the sons of men. We are here to reign and to dominate and to subdue. The devil is not in control. We are in control. We are in charge. We determine the outcome. We will become better and better even after elections. Better and better, better and better. So if you are not happy today, prepare yourself for the happiness that is coming soon. If you are not happy today, I'm saying prepare yourself for the happiness that is coming soon. That is coming soon. I say, I'll say it again. The industries will be reopened. Our children will be gainfully employed in this country. Those who are sick, you are healed. Muzita Rajes. In the name of Jesus. The sick have been what? Healed. You can do whatever you couldn't do. Make sure what you are giving to the Lord today, right now, is your open your mouth and say best. Okay, so stretch your hand now. Hand it action. And they never walk straight. And they carry your hand. Carry your hand direction. In this, in this, in this, and this way, and this way. Move, move, move. Chukwa ma in this, in this. Take your offering. Move, move. Nanga utanga uto nama. Ta 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 ta. No, no. In this, find a seat. Find a seat. Take it out. Look at it, make sure it's the best. Take it to the altar. Waruma tens, please shandi say altar. Ma altars are ruma tens. Agarupa fadzwa. Ma altars are ruma tens. Shandi say ma altars are ruma tens. Warimu nom. Usabo pusha na zenyu. Don't zira kuenda na yoku mbai. Come and you drop your seat on the altar. We need more ashes there, please. We need more ashes there. Sukuda ma asha katu andeyuko. Yeah, there are people that are magnetic. Ashes, that I'm please. sensing. So ashes please, we need more this. ashes the there. Water. We need more ashes there. Please, Andy, you can come. You can come, man of God. Let's come go. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you. Let's go to the altar and give to God. But I'm expecting to see a joyful face. As long as please keep a smiling face. Until you go get it. You be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Let's all be happy. Let's all be thankful to God. Let's go and give to God. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. We can put our hands together for our Father once again, wherever you are. Right. Here's a special announcement for next week. Next week, please, if you have got a gadget, your cell phone, bring it in if you want some translation or interpretation. We won't be having a direct Shona interpretation. If you, are, you have a challenge in understanding English or any other language, bring your um, earphones as well as your phone. We will be giving you the bandwidth to work with. We will give you the bandwidth to work with next week. So please remind those that are coming, even the visitors that you'll be bringing, that bring your, your, your phone as well as your earphones for interpretation if you've got a challenge in understanding English language. Thank you. Thank you. 